it's that time of year again. Med school applications are already underway. And in fact, most Canadian med school application deadlines for the fall 2023 admission cycle have already passed. Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emmanuel. I'm a second year medical student at McGill University in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Speaking of McGill, which is one of the four medical schools in the province of Quebec, I wanted to provide you all with some relevant admissions requirements for these four specific medical schools because like I said, the application deadline is fast approaching in November but has not yet passed. If you're watching this video, maybe you're in the process of applying to one of these four schools or maybe you are thinking about applying to one of these four schools in the near future. Regardless of your position, it's important to familiarize yourself with the school's admissions requirements prior to even starting an application. It'll just make the process smoother. The following information is from the AFMC. So that's the Association of Faculties of Medicine in Canada. And what they do on a yearly basis is that they pull together all the admissions info from all the 17 different medical schools across Canada. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with Canada's number one ranked medical school according to the McLean's University rankings in 2022. And that's of course, McGill University. So McGill's MDCM program, which is equivalent to a MD, is offered in two campuses, in English at the Montreal downtown campus and in French at the Gatineau campus, which is right across from the country's capital, Ottawa. So the program approximately accepts 200 to 210 students on a yearly basis, 60% of which are university graduates, so they at least hold a bachelor's degree, and the other 40%, which are graduates from McGill's pre-med program. These are students that were accepted to McGill's pre-med program directly out of CGEP, which is unique to Quebec. When applying to McGill's medical program, there are certain prerequisite courses that you have to complete prior to starting your medical degree at McGill. These include two semesters worth of biology, physics, chemistry courses with labs, as well as organic chemistry. There are also unique pathways that allow you to get into the program. New in September 2021 is the Black Applicants pathway for Quebec residents specifically. There is also the First Nations and Inuit pathway, which is actually shared amongst the four uh, Quebec schools. What I mean is that there's a certain amount of spots that are allocated um, for this specific population, and those spots are shared amongst McGill, University of Montreal, University of Laval, and University of Sherbrooke. There's also a pathway for the Canadian Armed Forces, there's also a pathway from individuals who come from rural areas. And finally, there's an application pathway for international medical graduates, so IMGs. So last year, the mean GPA invited to an interview was a 3.9 on 4. And this score represents 70% of your pre-interview score. The other 20% comes from your CASPER test, and the final 10% comes from a CV that you have to submit to McGill. It's important to note that the CASPER test can be written in English or French. McGill accepts both versions of the test. As for the MCAT, well, the general theme is that the MCAT is not required for Quebec universities if you are a Quebec applicant. However, if you're applying from outside of Canada or you're applying as an international student, then the MCAT is required. And McGill considers a competitive score to be at least a 508 on the MCAT. Now the application portal for McGill opened on September 1st, 2022 and will remain open until November 1st, 2022. So you have just a bit more than two weeks to submit your application. Interviews will likely be held virtually ever since the COVID pandemic. That's been the general trend. And this usually happens sometime in February. And the interview results are released approximately six weeks after your interview date. This typically happens at the end of March. And McGill will also consider one year deferral requests if you have a valid reason. Okay, so let's move on to the next university, and that's the University of Laval, which is in Quebec City. 
the program is offered in four years, four and a half years, or five years, depending on which stream you choose and which campus you are studying at. So there are three campuses at the Université de Laval. One is in Quebec City, the other is in Lévis, and the final one is in Rimouski. At all three campuses, the language of instruction is French, and that's the same for all the other Quebec schools. McGill is the only one that is offered in English, and that's specifically at the downtown campus in Montreal. Everything else is in French in Quebec. So the French universities in general have a different way of grading your GPA. What they do is that they take your GPA and throw it into some algorithm that shoots it back out as an R score. And the R score will not only depend on how high your GPA is, it'll also depend on many other factors such as what program you were in. For example, a professional program such as law, for instance, is much more valuable to the University of Laval than a degree in the basic sciences. So just like McGill, the Université de Laval also has prerequisite courses, a little different. So you have two bio courses, three chem courses, two math courses, and three physics courses that you have to complete prior to starting medical school. Again, the MCAT is not required. The CASPER test is required and can only be written in French. Similarly to McGill, the Université de Laval admissions portal opened on September 1st and will close on November 1st. Interviews typically occur sometime in April and admission offers come out in May, so much later than McGill. In fact, they're set to be released on May 1st, 2023, specifically. Last year, 241 out of 2,291 applicants were accepted to the Université de Laval. 55% of these applicants directly came from CGEP, which means the other 45% were students that have already completed a bachelor's degree. So it's unclear how much weight they allocate to CASPER prior to receiving an interview but it does play a significant role, supposedly. And then once you do receive your interview, it's just like McGill, where that interview score will represent 100% of your final score. Furthermore, there's no mention of including any form of CV anywhere throughout the application. So the only way they can get a feel of your amazing extracurriculars is pretty much during the interview process, or maybe you could talk about them on the CASPER test. So the third Quebec medical school is the Université de Sherbrooke, which is of course in the city of Sherbrooke. Just like McGill, the program is four years long, but unlike McGill, the language of instruction is specifically French. So there are approximately 238 spots and 200 of eight of those spots specifically go to Quebec residents. Yeah. 28 of those spots are allocated to maritime students. So that includes New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. And finally, one spot is allocated to an out of province student. So anywhere from Ontario and westward. I know the math doesn't add up, but I guess this is where the a special pathway such as the First Nations and Indigenous pathways as well as a Canadian Armed Forces pathways kind of meet and those spots can be filled out by those specific applicants. Similarly to Université de Laval, the CASPER test must be written in French. The MCAT is not required and finally there's no mention of a CV in the application. Furthermore, your GPA and program are very much relevant because they're also converted to an R score. Université de Sherbrooke actually shares the weight of your R score and your CASPER test, which are 70 and 30% respectively prior to your interview. After the interview, your R score still weighs a solid 40% of your post-interview score and your interview represents the remaining 60%. So the CASPER is included, uh, is excluded, sorry, in this part of the equation. So something I forgot to mention about all the French universities, so this applies to Université de Laval, Sherbrooke, and Université de Montréal, which we'll talk about next, is that you have to prove your proficiency in French. And that's not just by writing the CASPER test in French. You have to either prove to them that you went to a French elementary or high school, or if you haven't, you have to complete a French proficiency test, which I heard was quite difficult. 
even for French speaking students. So students will have the option to study in Sherbrooke, Montérégie, or Saguenay. Final offers are also sent out on May 1st. Furthermore, Sherbrooke has the biggest unbalance when it comes to CGEP versus university students. What I mean is that there are significantly more CGEP students that start medical school at Sherbrooke versus students that have already completed a bachelor degree. And there is no pre-med at Sherbrooke, just like there's no pre-med at Université de Laval. In 2021, there were 147 CGEP students that were accepted and only 37 university students that were accepted into the program. So if you're a CGEP student that's thinking of applying to one of the four universities, well, you should apply to all of them, but in reality, your chances are highest statistically at Sherbrooke. But something to consider is that just like Ulaval, Sherbrooke doesn't have a pre-med program. So if you're coming directly from CGEP, there's no transition period that the pre-med program offers to you. You're going from CGEP, from your health science degree, for example, and jumping straight into medicine, which is a big jump. So the last school is UDM or Université de Montréal, University of Montreal, which is, of course, also in the city of Montreal, but it also has a campus out in Mauricie. So again, just like Sherbrooke and McGill, it's a four-year program. The language of instruction is French, and there are approximately 95 university graduates that get accepted from Quebec each year. The rest of the class comprises of 225 pre-meds that were accepted the year prior. So again, CGEP students have a significantly bigger advantage at getting accepted versus the university applicants at Université de Montréal. And the fact that UDM has a pre-med program just like McGill there is a smoother transition process from CGEP to medicine. Again, the application portal closes on November 1st. Interviews are set to occur on April 22nd and 23rd, and admission offers are supposed to come out on May 15th, 2023. There are also prerequisites for UDEM, but the general rule of thumb is that if you've completed a health sciences or pure and applied sciences degree or anything related to that, where you have to complete your fundamental physics, chemistry, biology, and math courses, then you've probably met all the criteria for medicine for any medical school in Canada. So before the interview, your R score, which they also use, represents 60% of your application, and the remaining 40% is allocated to your CASPER test. The good thing about UDM is that they allow you to write your CASPER test in your language, preferred language of choice, whether that's English or French, but you still have to prove that you are proficient in French, regardless of the language you choose to write the CASPER test in. Post-interview though, it is solely your interview score that will determine whether or not you are accepted into the program. So this pretty much covers the overall application process of the four medical schools within Quebec as of October 2022. This is of course subject to change and if you're watching this video in the future then you should look on the school's websites just to verify that these dates haven't changed. As of now you have until November 1st to apply so don't forget. And don't forget to register for your CASPER test if you haven't done already. Remember, if you're an Anglophone like myself and you prefer to write the CASPER test in English, well, you're going to have to write a separate CASPER test for McGill and UDM and then write it again in French for Université de Laval and Sherbrooke if you're planning on applying to all four universities. So remember, this is a superficial and unofficial guide that I put together using the AFMC's resources, which are available to the public and I'll tag a link in the description down below. But what you should do is always keep yourself up to date using the university's specific application websites. So go on McGill, go on UDAM, go on UDAVAL, go on UCHELBOOK's website and make sure that you're following the application process step by step and that you're not missing out on anything. Because for all I know next year, they could say, yeah, you need to submit a CV as well and here's how you do it. And in this video, I told you that for the French university, you don't need to submit a CV. So if you have any additional questions regarding the application process, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You could reach out by Instagram, you could reach out by email, you could reach out by commenting down below. 
but your best bet is to specifically reach out to the admissions team of the respective university that you're applying to because they have the best answers and the most up-to-date answers on the entire application process. So I wish you all the best of luck in your applications to the Quebec medical schools, but to any medical school in Canada, in the States, in Europe, wherever you're applying. And don't forget, never give up. You'll all be great doctors someday. If this is a career that you are truly passionate about and you can't see yourself as anything else but an amazing doctor someday, well then persistence is key. Even if you don't get in, you try again. And eventually medical schools like this, you'll get in. So of course, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one.